Hello, welcome back to How About That Crypto. I'm your host, Bitcoin Stylist on Twitter and Bitcoin Hairstylist on Instagram. Today you're watching Week in Review. Every Saturday we're we'll doing a whole week in review, but you probably want to hear about the crypto crash. So if you stay to the end, I will talk about what's going on, what new risks there are, my opinions, and my strategy. All right. Uh, if you, do, if you like the content or you don't like the content, please let me know by commenting below. Give me some feedback. Also, please uh, like and subscribe. If you click on the link in uh, my bio, if you're watching on Instagram, you can follow to the YouTube channel and click subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe and click the bell. Give me a thumbs up. It helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. All right, and just to be clear, this is not financial advice. This is for entertainment purposes only. You can use the links that are in the YouTube, and I put them on Twitter, to do your own research. All right, so welcome to Weekend Review. Uh, it's a lot. We covered a lot this week. Uh, what is a DAO? Kim K and Mayweather crypto scam. Walmart goes crypto. Nike goes crypto. Microsoft buys Activision. Turks get adopt crypto, Google's going crypto, MasterCard partners with Coinbase, uh, four countries adopting Bitcoin, Fed drops crypto papers, and last but not least, we have the crypto crash. All right, so let's get started. Uh, Kim Kardashian and the Mayweather scam. Uh, all right, so there's class action lawsuit uh, that are saying that the celebrity, they use their celebrity status to uh, promote a coin that turned out to be a scam. And, uh, you know, they, maybe they didn't know. I don't know. Uh, Mayweather has a history. He shilled a coin without saying that he was paid, had to pay $600,000 uh, fine to uh, the SEC. And uh, so we'll see what happens with this new case. Walmart goes crypto. Multiple patents filed, at least one for virtual currencies. Multiple for NFTs, and that's going to be for virtual goods. Also, it'll probably be for stuff in the metaverse. And uh, they'll also tokenize real-world goods. And um, any of this stuff that you want to know more about, just definitely go back and watch the episodes. I give a lot more information in those, and I also have all the links in their respective episodes. Okay, Nike goes metaverse. There's, they file a ton of trademark, applica trademark applications for virtual sneakers and apparel. They teamed up with Roblox. If you don't know what Roblox is and you have children, ask them. Otherwise, you can Google it or check out the other previous episode. Uh, but it's a game that a lot of young people play and they hang out. And uh, it's, it's like social. And, um, and uh, they also are creating Nike Land in Roblox. So they're going to create their own little like metaverse within a metaverse. And they also bought Artifact, which is a virtual sneaker company. So they're serious. Microsoft buys Activision around a $70 billion cash deal, which should increase their gaming revenue by 50%, and it set them up for metaverse expansion. Hey, how are you? Uh, and um, let's see what else. Uh, they're competing with Facebook, I mean Meta. <laughs> uh, Microsoft says that they can get into um, the metaverse faster and easier with less friction if they go through your current devices. Facebook wants you to go through goggles. We'll see if Facebook changes their stance, but there's not a lot of goggles on the market yet. Um, okay, Turkey adopts, Turk, sorry, not Turkey. Turks adopt crypto. As a matter of fact, Turkey banned uh, transactions. You can't, you can hold crypto, but you're not supposed to be able to trade it, basically. Um, inflation is surging at almost 40%. It's lost, fit their, their, um, the lira, the Turkish currency, lost 50% of its value last year. And bank, banks' deposits in Turkey hold two-thirds of U.S. Uh, two-thirds of bank deposits in Turkey are U.S. dollars and euro. And there's, uh, the government takes those deposits and puts them... To, it, to prop up the lira and so now fear is setting in because there people are afraid is the government going to force conversion and i'm going to lose my foreign currency uh, and so they're moving into crypto and they accounted for 60 percent of trading volume recently for tether which is a u.s dollar backed stable coin and more about that in the respective um episode Google is going crypto. They hired a PayPal veteran to reset their strategy. Their banking efforts have failed. Google Pay only accounted for 4% of contactless transactions. 
and it's largely considered a failure. I mean, 4% is nothing for the size of Google, so that is definitely a failure. So now they're transitioning to be connective tissue for consumer finance. That's a quote from them. Uh, they're going to build out digital wallet. Uh, they want to compete with Amazon. Majority of search for goods starts on Amazon's app or Amazon.com. And uh, they want you to do more of your shopping through Google. So they're doing no fees for retailers, offering crypto availability in different cards. The formal, former PayPal COO is now head of payments at Google and has said, crypto is something we pay a lot of attention to. As user demand and merchant demand evolves, we'll evolve with it. Basically, they're getting ready for regulation to set the stage, but I think a lot of these big players are not going to really get in until there's there's um, there's more clarity. Uh, however, we'll see. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, Mastercard partners with Coinbase. Mastercard will now be accept be accepted to purchase NFTs when Coinbase launches their NFT marketplace. Because right now you gotta like you gotta open up an account with a crypto exchange. You gotta buy the crypto, you have to transfer your money, buy the crypto, and then send it to like a marketplace and then purchase it. It's a lot of friction. The average person is not gonna get into it, but if you can just put your credit card number in, you're gonna be all of a sudden in the crypto world. And uh, Coinbase has a billion user target. So this is supposed to help them usher that in. They're currently at 73 million. They got a ways to go. All right. And then uh, earning interest on your crypto. Well, BlockFi, I talked about that just really briefly. You get 4% on Bitcoin, 4.5% on Ethereum, 9% on USDC. Hello, good morning. Uh, and um, the credit card pays 1.5% Bitcoin rewards on every purchase. And I have that credit card and I'm just stacking it up. You know, everything I purchase, I do it. Good morning, what's going on? Uh, Four countries are adopting Bitcoin and crypto. Turkey, uh, which I mentioned earlier, banned it. And there's a big fear of inflation and confiscation of deposits. Uh, Argentina, they have already set up the Lightning Network. I talked about that in the ep previous episode. So, you know, go back and check out the one that says four countries adopting crypto. It's, um, they have a 50% inflation. So uh, two thirds of all crypto holders in Argentina use crypto to protect their savings. And uh, they're going to be accepting Bitcoin for payments around the country through the Lightning Network, which is basically helps speed up lower costs and lower energy use for uh, the uh, uh, for purchases on the Lightning Network. Mexico, one of the largest supermarkets and financial companies, incentivized people to use Bitcoin for purchases by giving them a twenty percent discount, which is incredible. Uh, Brazil, one percent of Rio Treasury. Uh, is going to go into crypto. Uh, they're setting up a working group to explore giving discount for property taxes in Bitcoin. Uh, the Fed drops crypto papers. People are waiting for guidance. Um, they failed to deliver the crypto papers that they just dropped. It's like um, they're, they did an analysis or some research. It was largely considered a, uh, like a failed, like a lot of expectations were, going, were that they were going, that we were going to get some sort of guidance, but they basically said the legislative and executive branch need to give them a green light before they can start a stable coin. And um, they did cite some privacy concerns over CBDCs being a user, used for surveillance. And uh, they've opened up for public opinion. So if you go to the episode that says that the Fed and their crypto docs and the crypto papers, there's a link to give your public opinion. You know, send your send you know the opinion saying that uh, you love crypto, and um, maybe we'll have some favorable regulation. Okay, so uh, so now that we've gotten you know to the end here, I know that was uh, quick and fast. I just want to kind of give everybody you know the rundown of all the stories we talked about this week, and if you want to dive deeper, just definitely go into those stories. But um, the big thing, the big topic that a lot of people want to hear about is the crypto crash. You know, if you hold crypto or you pay attention, then you've probably seen that there is a massive crash happening. And, um, you know, some of my, everything, a lot of my coins dropped 20% yesterday or within 20, last 24 hours. Well, that was on the back of like a 10% drop. So we're looking at, we're looking at, um, 20 to 40 percent, 45 percent drop across the board in the last couple week, couple weeks, or or at least since the beginning of the year for sure. 
So if you're a crypto holder, then, uh, you know, I feel for you and, um, you know, hopefully that it's not scaring you, but so let's get into this. What do, what is my opinion about why the crypto market is crashing? Well, one, historically, especially the last couple of years, crypto has gone, moved up and down with the market. So the market, like especially tech stocks have been selling off and there's been a lot of warnings about tech stocks, tech, tech stocks losing their value because they've considered overbought. And uh, it looks like people are maybe taking profits. And the Fed is talking about raising rates. So that cr creates a lot of FUD. And if you don't know the word FUD, it stands for fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And it's basically uh, a fog over the realities. So I would say that, you know, there's some reality to the raising of the rates because crypto is still considered a risk on asset. It's not considered a risk off. It's still not considered an inflation hedge from the wider perspective of the market. So, so that's going to, if rates are going up, then the opportunity for your cash to earn more money it makes is, is there. So then you're less likely to go into alternative speculative assets, but it's also, you know, their fear of raising the rates in the markets is that it's going to crash the markets if they start raising rates or if they raise rates too fast. You know, there's a lot of speculation of what's going on with the rates getting raised. Uh, lots of traders are taking profits. That is definitely the case. Uh, there's a lot of traders that are experiencing the FUD and they're running for the doors to preserve their money before they lose too much. And what this is causing is the prices, as the prices drop, they hit these these points where, you know, if you have a position where you have an automatic, you can set up like an automatic sell. Like if it goes below this mark, I'm going to sell, I want my crypto to sell automatically and preserve my money. You know, I don't want to lose more than this much or I'm in the profit. And if it get, if my profits shrink to this size, sell so I can at least make some money. Well, that also happens with leverage and shorts and longs, which I won't dive into too much, but basically what happens is there's automatic liquidation, meaning um, automatic forced selling of crypto when the price moves like it is, which which all that leverage is, it's leverage. So as in like people are borrowing money to trade. So if you borrow money that there's like a larger drop when that when leverage is shaken out. Uh, all right. So that's not that's just not it, though. There's executive order is expected to come from Biden uh, about giving some sort of guidance on crypto. We'll see what that says, and but that's kind of fearful. I mean, you know, the people that he's appointing to these different positions have very non-crypto friendly positions. Like that person he appointed to the OCC wants everyone to have a, have a, uh, a, um, an account with the Federal Reserve or the Treasury or like it's like doesn't believe in retail banks or something. I mean, I don't know if they changed their position, but that's definitely something that I read about this person. And uh, the SEC people that have come on board are not necessarily crypto friendly either. So there's a lot of concern about what this executive order will come will bring. Uh, Micro Strategies, which is Michael Saylor's company, if you don't know who he is, Michael Saylor is the number one Bitcoin bull in the world right now. This person, he's bought purchased three and a half or three point seven five billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. It's currently valued at four and a half billion. So he's up and um, his average price is in the low 30s, I think, but he owns like 140,000 uh, Bitcoin and he puts it on his company's balance sheet. Well, when every quarter you got to file paperwork with the SEC if you're publicly traded and you and they rejected his accounting method. So now there's questions if there's going to be investigation or how he's going to change that. You know, what's happened to his stock price. So that's kind of all up in the air. That just happened. That was just announced. So uh, this a lot of this stuff that I haven't talked about this week will be in the news next week. And I'll do a little more information on them. Uh, Bitcoin and proof of mining environmental impact like commission. There's going to be some sort of investigation and committees are going to be put together and that was announced but we don't have a clear date yet at least as far as a as of my current knowledge that has not been announced but that's on its way and russia announced a nationwide ban on using use and mining and the big fear is over inflation because they're experiencing high inflation 
and uh, they are an authoritarian government just like China, who also banned crypto. So it makes sense that all these two authoritarian governments are banning crypto because they don't, I mean, one, they're not the dollar. The dollar is the most used uh, currency, fiat currency in the crypto market by way of stable coins. And I can talk about that more, you know, down the road, but essentially, you know, the U.S. dollar still reigns dominance in the crypto space. It's just not U.S. dollar. It's synthetic U.S. dollars where someone takes that dollar, mm -hmm. sticks it in a bank account, and then creates a coin and keeps it in the bank. So when someone wants that dollar back, they can get the dollar back for that coin. And that's what a stable coin is supposed to be. Okay, so... All this stuff, all this fear, uncertainty, doubt, banning, authoritarian governments, like fear of a maybe unfriendly administration to crypto. We don't know yet. We're going to see, you know, I'm going to keep uh, keep my fingers, fr fingers crossed that Joe Biden is going to, uh, you know, make some smart moves and realize the potential of this industry and the speed of in which it's grown and its ability to pivot on a dime. It's the most agile industry. They made so many changes. You know, when Bitcoin, when crypto mining was banned in China within one month, they went, they went from 61% of control of transaction power all the way to zero. And then it all propped up and the U S is now, I think at 35% and, um, and, and it also moved to other parts. And some of these parts were in Russia. So there's a concern about that. You know, if they if they effectively ban it, then that those all those miners are going to have to move. All right. So what gives me confidence? Because that's all that's some fear stuff, and that's stuff that's happening right now. That's not me speculating. That's me saying these things are causing fear in the market, and I stand by that. What what gives me confidence is every basically everything I just told you that we talked about this week. I would say the majority of it is bullish. Um, the CEO of Charles Schwab came out and said that um, they wanted clarity and regulation so that they can offer their clients crypto trading. I'll, uh, that'll probably be in more depth in the news next week. Um, banks don't want depositors leaving for crypto, uh, so that gives me confidence. The other, other side of that coin, no pun intended, is that the banks... Uh, could effectively lobby against crypto in order to prevent depositors from leaving. But it looks like there's been massive, not looks like, there have been massive investments into crypto, into this space by major financial institutions for startup companies, but as well as they've been building out infrastructure. And some already have the infrastructure for purchasing and custody of crypto, but only for high net worth individuals. So, you know, the highest level, whatever, you know, they, they don't want those people leaving. They don't want them taking their money. So they built out the way, ways for them to, you know, have, have access to crypto. So that's gives me like, gives me confidence. Now what scares me? Cause I want to keep it real with everybody. Lack of knowledge on most people's part about crypto. And it's very clear and obvious to me that most people have a little bit of information and a little bit of information can be dangerous, especially because a lot of that information is outdated. There's a lot of outdated information and this industry is moving so fast. You know, when the concern for um, some of the uh, environmental issues came up, a bunch of miners switched over. They created an environmental, um, the uh, crypto climate accord model after the Paris climate accord. You know, how does that stuff build up? I don't know. We're going to have to watch closely. And without regulation, probably, you know, it's probably, it might not, it might not continue in that direction. But we're moving in the right direction right now. We just need to kind of get the government and the private sector, you know, on the same page. And, um, okay, so what else is, scares me? Uh, fearful things. People are fearful over things that have to do with money. Like the amount of fear and uncertainty and doubt about changing the way money works or giving some new form of currency really scares people. And I'm just telling you from like how many people I talk to, it's like it definitely makes people uncomfortable. Um, you know, and I think that goes back to my first point that most people just uh, aren't taking the time to learn about it, but they got their lives. And that's why I do this show. So hopefully you're watching this show to like get some information. You don't have to like take my word for it. You can check out all the links that I include in every episode. Um, okay, what else scares me? The country is divided 
And uh, the Democrats and the Republicans, both sides, I don't care if you disagree with me, this is my opinion and I, I own this, and Dems and Republicans are building walls, not bridges. And that scares me because when walls go up, that brings on populism, nationalism, xenophobia, authoritarianism, you know. Do your research. All those things are at all-time highs across the globe. You know, both left and right, both sides are building walls and not bridges. So um, I just want to be excited about new tech and the evolution of our payment systems and evolution of currency and evolution of communication via value over the internet. Like, that's what I want to be excited about. But um, unfortunately, like, people are fearful of things and there's a lot going on in the world, you know, and, you know, maybe, maybe people don't want something else that's new and controversial. I don't know. So, and, and then the last thing and the biggest thing that's, that, that, that I, 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 I'm concerned about is inflation. Like inflation is, is scary and all these, you know, people like Janet Yellen at the treasury is downplaying it saying she's confident it'll go to 2% by the end of the year. It's at six or 7% depending on who you, who, who's doing the numbers. And, uh, and the European Central Bank, the head of the Euro European Central Bank said that they're not worried about inflation either. And uh, so that makes me kind of worried that they're not worried. And, you know, we have supply chain issues and COVID policies that while they may or may not be the right ones, I'm not talking about my opinion about that. But the fact that the fact is that our current policies do hurt businesses because if someone's got to isolate for five days and they they hit other people who have to isolate for five days, that impacts the supply chain. So until that kind of stuff is worked out and I get like it's maybe it's not the time, you know, maybe it is. This is not about that. It's just saying like there are variables in an equation for price to go up. And one of the variables is COVID. One of the variables is government regulation. One of the variables is basically that's it. I mean, it's government regulation and oh, and adoption. Like do people even adopt it? But we've already seen adoption of people moving into the space. You know, but there's there that we lack stability, and until we have stability, uh, or we won't have stability until we have government, uh, you know, regulatory clarity, because the big banks won't get in, and the bigger financial institutions, and some of these big, uh, big companies um, like social media, internet companies, WalMarts, Amazons. I don't know that they'll get in until there's regulatory clarity. I know a lot of the crypto people that I follow think it will. But I don't, I have a lot of doubts about that. Why would you bring on that, you know, that uncertainty? I guess uh, if you're trying to be competitive, like Google is trying to be competitive, but, you know, all these people are, are they're making moves and anticipation of potential regulatory clarity, but they're not actually pulling the trigger. And I don't know that they will until there is regulatory clarity. So, um, so yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I mean, we're going to, I'm going to be watching like a hawk and reporting that news to you all. And, um. And there's one other thing I want to say, and, and none of this is financial advice. This is just my opinion. And based on my research and based on my understanding, if you think of crypto as a new up and coming sector and a new technology, and you think of what other companies historically had a new technology or was a grown or it was an emerging industry, think about who made the most money off of them. The people that make the most money off them are the people that get in get invested in early and before they go public and and obviously you got to ride through waves of growth and stuff like that but and you can make a lot of money as a retail investor just buying on the stock market but the real money comes in before they go public and getting in before someone goes public is not very easy for retail investors and a lot of times not even available to you well and the people who it is available to are wealthy people who have who are considered accredited investors, meaning you have an income of two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year or a net worth of one million, not including your residence, your home. Like that asset can't be counted towards your one million net worth. So if that doesn't apply to you, then you the only way you can get into a company pre money is to go on a crowdfunding site, and but not all businesses are on there. So you know, did Uber go on a crowdfunding site? No. So, 
Well, all that said, this is the first time in history that a normal person like you and me can get invo- invested before the banks and before financial institutions. You know, they're starting to get in. You know, venture capitalists are in. There's people like Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank that are in. That's in, and he has a financial institution. But he said it took him six months to figure out the regulatory stuff, so his compliance officer would would agree to would agree to uh, signing off on their compliance paperwork. I guess all financial institutions have to uh, before investments are made, it has to go through a compliance officer. And it was his company, and the compliance officer told him no. So it took him six months. He likes to talk about it all the time. So, so that just means that assuming a regulatory clarity comes in and it's friendly, then the banks in pro- potentially publicly traded companies will come into the space. And this is my speculation and my theory. And when that happens, the money is going to flood in, which will raise the prices and the total amount of money in the space. So... That's what I'm I'm hopeful for, and uh, that's what I'm betting on, and um, yeah. So remember, keep the faith, buy the dip, and hodl with diamond hands. That's the saying. It's not financial advice, but hodl means hold. It's just a misspelling of hold, and it's a term that kind of went viral during the Wall Street bets thing. And diamond hands as well. You know, diamonds are strong. Have strong hands. Hold on with strength. You know, okay, anyway, that's from crypto lingo. You know, you just got a little uh, schooling on it if you didn't know. So, anyway, I'm keeping the faith. I'm buying the dip. I'm hodling with diamond hands. Uh, tell me what you're doing. Tell me if you like the content. Tell me if you like uh, how how I did this format. You know, just give me some feedback. This is a longer version because it's a week in review and some personal thoughts on me. You know, the crypto market's crashing, so I had to, I had to give you my thoughts. Um, so yeah, give me feedback, like, subscribe. If you're watching on Instagram, uh, click on the link in the link tree. Please go to my YouTube. It's helped support me. It doesn't cost you anything, and it's just a couple clicks. All right? Thank you so much. Hodl on. Have a good weekend. And that was the other thing. Sorry, last thing. No matter what happens, just have a good weekend. All right, hodl on.